So today we're taking a look at the best tier 10 destroyers that you should be considering grinding in 2023. We've already looked at the tier 10 battleships and the tier 10 cruisers. The idea here is to just give you my opinions on each one of these ships. If you're looking for more live gameplay, definitely check out the one take series on my channel. I'll also leave a link in the description down below. It's a lot of really good live matches where I'm not cherry picking good games. I'm just going into a battle, walking you through some of my thought process while playing these ships. And really, I think that's a great way to get an idea of how to play them. However, here we're talking about whether they're worth grinding and a little bit of how difficult the grind is. So to start with, let's take a look at the gearing, one of the oldest DDs in the game. Used to be an amazing gunboat. However, there's a lot of new additions that severely overpower gearing in the gun department. So it's been more of a hybrid DD nowadays. It still has very good torpedoes, 16 kilometers, 16 and a half kilometer range on the good torps, in my opinion. They do decent damage. They actually reload surprisingly quickly. Gearing just feels a little bit slow. Um, it has an amazing smoke screen, but it's a long duration one. It's more of a team support smoke screen. There's a lot of other DDs that we'll see coming up that have short bursty smokes that are very good for farming or getting out of tough situations multiple times. Gearing also doesn't have a heal. There's a lot of things and, well, I guess gimmicks that we could call it that gearing doesn't have. It's a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none DD. It's still very solid, and grinding up the line, I think you would learn how to play DDs quite well, grinding up the American DD line. So for beginners, this is one to consider, although I think there's one that's a little better uh, that we'll talk about in a little bit. Experienced players, you probably already have a gearing. Uh, if not, it's decent. I think there's more interesting options for you, though, if you're looking for a more unique playstyle. Next up, we got the Z-52. This is a ship that I think is just a worse gearing. Like the torps are way worse. The guns are worse in a lot of ways. The HE is pretty anemic on the Z-52, even though they do pen 32 millimeters of armor. It's quite nice. The shell damage is just so low. It feels pretty weak. Um, the reload is quite long on the main guns. The gimmick here though, is that you have a hydro that basically matches your concealment. Six kilometer hydro, 6.1 kilometer concealment. It's very, very powerful as a cap contester. However, most people aren't actually just gonna sit within your hydro. This is a gimmick that a lot of people know about already. So this smoke up, use hydro to spot the enemy DD and then kill them with it tends to not really happen anymore. It's still a decent DD, uh, but a little bit lower on the power curve and there's much better options. Uh, so new players, probably not. And more experienced players, again, I think there's more interesting options later on. And to start with the Kleber, a very, very strong destroyer. Uh, one of the best gunboats in the entire game. This ship has insanely good shell velocity, amazing range. It's well, one of the fastest DDs in the entire game. It's very, very maneuverable. It doesn't have a smoke though. So for new players, it might be a little hard to learn this line, learning how to play an open water, really not concealment based destroyer. There's less of a focus on torps here, although you can go down that route with the legendary mod. Um, but I haven't personally played around with that too much. I tend to play Kleber as a more long range support gunboat and one that is mainly a second line DD that goes in with a gearing or a Shimakaze or Z52, any of these that have decent concealment, provides that kind of backup uh, firepower. So it's really, really fun with the reload booster. And I think it's a very, very strong ship. So if you're experienced at the game with DDs, you should be getting a good Kleber. It's really, really good. Beginners, maybe hold off, play a different DD line uh, just to start with, but this is definitely one you should consider getting after you learn how to play more standard DD roles. Up next, we got Harugamo, putting this one kind of in B tier. It's just an okay destroyer. It's got really good firepower, 100 millimeter guns that have some artificial pen improvements, meaning you don't have to take IFHE on these anymore. The DPM is pretty nice, especially on the armor piercing. The problem with Harugamo really is that it's really slow and really clumsy. So it eats torpedoes pretty easily, especially if you end up stopping in your smoke to farm a lot. Um, it's just a really difficult ship to play because the instant you're spotted, you're so easy to hit by other destroyers. But not only that, the cruisers and battleships that are pretty far away 
can hit this thing very, very easily. So you have to be very careful of that. The Torps, well decent, have an awkwardly wide spread. So there's a lot of times where you're just going to find your Torp Salvo missed because the enemy happened to slip through a gap in them. I think Harugamo is reasonably strong, but for me, I don't play it very much anymore. In fact, it's mainly relegated to my uh, research bureau points farming at this point, which is where you reset the line and then free XP up the entire line, getting your uh, research points very, very quickly that way. It's the cheapest line to do that with, and that's why it's that way for me. So a decent one to pick up for that reason. Beginners, again, to something different. And I don't really find her growth that interesting. So for you more experienced players, I don't know if you def definitely need to get this one outside of the research point grinding. Up next in D tier, we got the Regolo. Um, uh, no surprises here, I'm sure. But if you're new to the game, let me just kind of spell it out for you. The ship is more of a gunboat DD that has no range um and not great concealment either so you're relying on a fuel smoke which is a smoke that completely conceals you while going at full speed and a really short duration powerful speed boost it's relatively quick it's okay maneuverability the gimmick here is the sap hits extremely hard so a regolo can shoot maybe five or six k damaging salvos every four to five seconds depending on the build it's very strong at close ranges but let's be honest most tier 10 games you're not getting in close all that much so i find regolo very very difficult to play and i don't really think it's for many people certainly not beginners and even you experienced dd players if you're looking for a challenge definitely consider it but i don't think it's that good now for the first DD in S tier, I think the daring is something you just have to have. Experienced players, if you don't have one, just get one. The daring is so awesome. It's a gearing on steroids. Uh, for you new players, I think this is, should be your first destroyer line. If you're looking to get into DDs, I think the British DDs are some of the most forgiving ones to play that have all the tools available to them to be a cap contesting DD. So you can learn that role. You can also play on the flanks a little bit. You can try to farm with this ship. The guns are extremely strong and the Torps aren't even that bad. Even though they're only 10 kilometers of range, they do decent damage. The single line uh, launchers are a pretty fun gimmick as well. But the important things here really are short duration smoke screens, which like I said, are great for getting out of bad situations. So if you find yourself overcommitted, you get surprised by someone, you have plenty of smokes available that come up very quickly to deal with those situations. You have a very small range hydro. It's a personal hydro that basically just helps you not ever eat torpedoes. The maneuverability here is awesome. And I haven't even really talked about it, but the guns, the reload on these guns is amazing. This daring can kind of hang with basically any destroyer in the game. This is a very scary opponent. So combining this really strong firepower on the main guns with basically good cap contester concealment means this is a very scary opponent. And I think it's really, really strong. And everyone, if you're looking for DDs, should probably think about getting this ship. Up next, we have the Delny. Of course, this one replaced the Kaba a little bit recently. Um, and it's just not great. I think the thing that holds the Delny back is its DPM. The range is nice, the reload is okay, but you lose a turret compared to the previous tier 10, the Kabarosk. And that kinda hurts. Um, the maneuverability is pretty good. Um, it's, it's a decent tier 10, honestly. I just don't think it's really bringing much to the table. If you're looking for that fast open water gunboat, I think Kluber is just far better. Um, even the Kaba, if you're able to get it for, I think it's coal now. I do think it's better than the Delny as well, especially if you're able to get the legendary or unique upgrade on Kaba, which extends its range to be more competitive. Delny is just a bit of a nothing ship to me. Uh, I don't really play it all that much, and I don't think it's particularly worthwhile to grind for. Grozovoy, on the other hand, I think is quite worthwhile grinding for. This is another standard-ish style of DD. It's a lot, looks a lot like a gearing or a daring. 
Uh, this time, though, you have better shell velocity on your main guns. You don't have necessarily the fastest reload, but the shell velocity is really, really nice, giving you decent range to farm things with. You still have a smoke this time on a Russian DD. You have a heal as well. Actually, that's something I forgot about on the daring. Sorry, just to go back to that. You have a heal. I can't believe I forgot about the daring heal. I'm sure there's a lot of you in the comments like, heal, heal, heal on the daring. Yeah, having a heal is amazing. Um, Delny also has one, but again... Bit of a nothing chip on that one. Heals on DDs are insane because they allow you to take fights and engagements early on, trade with an enemy DD. Maybe you trade one for one health-wise. Well, if you have a heal and they don't, that means that the next engagement, you just have a straight-up advantage. And as the game goes on, that advantage stacks. And so that's why having a heal is just so valuable on a DD. So I really enjoy the Grozevoy. It's not particularly fast. It's not bad, but it's not a Kleber or Delny Kaba type. Um, it's decently speedy, but more importantly, it has much better concealment than those ships. The Torps are just okay, uh, but really just having a ship that has decent stealth like the Grozevoy and this amazing shell velocity makes it pretty comfortable to play. I don't think it's quite as good as the Daring, uh, but I do still enjoy playing my Grozevoy. Up next, we got the Yu Yang, which is pretty much a clone of gearing, although the hull is a little bit smaller. The unique thing here with the Yu Yang is that your torpedoes are deep waters, which means they don't hit any destroyers, but they do extra damage against cruisers and battleships just because they have a much higher alpha potentially than they normally would have if they were hitting DDs as well. But the really dangerous thing about these deep waters is the concealment. These torps basically pop up next to your ship if they're going to hit you. So they're very, very good torpedoes to hit against battleships and cruisers. And recently, it actually got a buff where it gets a reload booster for those torpedoes. So it can actually dump out 20 extremely high damaging deep water torpedoes. So as a torp boat, Yu Yang is great. However, the guns are a massive weak point on this ship. They're the same guns as gearing, but they reload a second slower. And gearing already isn't a great gunboat. Uh, so yeah, I struggle to really want to play Yu Yang, even though it's a great torpedo boat. I think there's better options in that pure torpedo boat category for me personally. And really it comes down to me just missing the days where it had um, the gearing style of guns combined with better smoke screens, I think, than gearing. At least for a personal uh, smoke, the Yu Yangs are a little bit more like Daring's where they have a shorter duration and they come back quicker, although not as extreme as the Daring line. So Yu Yang sits at a comfortable B tier for me. It's just okay these days. I don't think it's anything particularly special though. Up next, we got Shimakaze, the other oldest DD in the game. And this is probably one of the best torpedo boats in the game. I'm sure that you've seen what this ship is all about. It's having 15 torpedoes that all deal well over 20,000 damage each. They have decent range depending on the torpedoes you use. I definitely recommend the 12 kilometer ones as the, kind of the best all around ones. I think the eight kilometer ones, while fast and high damaging, they just are a little too difficult to use in tier 10. And the 20 kilometer one's problem is that they're spotted from the moon. They have the opposite feature of the Yu Yang Torps. Everyone spots them from so far away, they become very easy to dodge. So the 12 kilometers are kind of that sweet spot on the Shimakaze. I think this is a great ship that if you don't have it and you're interested in DDs, I think it's very worthwhile picking up. However, you do lack a lot of gun power. So if you're getting into DD fights and you probably are going to lose a lot of DD engagements in the Shimakaze, even though it has pretty strong HE alpha, the reload's not great, the turret traverse is very difficult to use, but you have amazing concealment, so you don't necessarily always have to take those engagements. I find Shimakaze to be a very strong DD, very fun to land those torpedo salvos on, but it can be a little bit trickier to make work. I think it's a little easier to play a more gun-focused build going after cap control, I think you're going to learn how to play DDs a lot better. I'm, I'm talking about daring here mostly, again, uh, but I think that line is just so good for learning DDs for newer players. If you're more experienced in DDs and you don't have a Shimakaze, I mean, what are you doing? I think everyone at some point should have a Shimakaze to play. It's pretty popular, so though I think a lot of you already have it, though. 
And Elbing is going in C tier for me. This is a DD I don't enjoy playing at all. It's a bit of a light cruiser in a lot of ways, where the armor piercing is the focus this time, where it has near cruiser level AP pen, so you can Citadel cruisers at reasonable ranges. Um, the problem though with the Elbing is its size and maneuverability. It's very easy to hit, not very maneuverable, even though it has decent HP to make up for that. It's just a really difficult DD to play, and if you're forced into a cap contesting role where maybe you're the only DD that spawned on that flank, maybe you're the only DD for your team in the game, you're at such a massive disadvantage against most of the other DDs in the game. It's very, very difficult to play in that sort of role. And I find that not having HE at all really to rely on is quite difficult. So the armor piercing, while good and even potentially able to do decent damage into some of these DDs that are a little wider, I don't know. I don't enjoy Elbing. The torpedoes, while I have decent range, they're a little slow. It's not a ship for me and certainly I don't think a good line for beginners. Maybe you, some of you more experienced players definitely enjoy this ship. I can see that, but maybe it being a unique playstyle it's worth going for? I don't know, not a huge fan of Elbing. And the last DD we're gonna talk about is the Holland, my personal favorite tier 10 DD. Admittedly, this ship probably shouldn't be an S tier, it should probably be an A tier, uh, but I had to put it S tier because I just have so much fun playing the Holland. This ship is an awesome torpedo boat, even though it doesn't have very high damaging torps because it has an amazing reload on the torps. The torps have a very narrow spread, so they're pretty accurate. And they actually have a fast reload and a fast torpedo speed. So I find them very easy to hit. They come back often. And honestly, Holland isn't really that bad of a gunboat, even though it only has four guns. They reload reasonably quickly. And of course, Holland has a heal as well. That's a very big advantage that not all the DDs have in this game. And the other amazing strength Holland has that I really haven't talked about yet with any of the other DDs is its AA. Holland actually has good enough AA that a carrier won't really want to come after you. Uh, so that opens up a lot of opportunities to flank in CV heavy games. And basically every other DD in the game can't do that. Even the ones that seem to have like, oh, AA is a decent thing, like Gearing or Grozovoy. It's like, you can slot defensive fire. Wow, that's amazing. It's not strong enough to actually prevent strikes. Holland's is. Holland will rip squads away from an enemy carrier, which is awesome. That's another reason I love playing it. The freedom I get, even in a CV game, is so nice. So I have to put Holland S tier. That's just a very personal bias. I think it probably fits in a comfortable A tier, though. Um, so that's going to be the list. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Definitely give your opinions. Let um, others know what you think are some of the best tier 10 DDs. Keep in mind, we are taking a look at this a bit from a perspective of what DDs you should be grinding in 2023. Some of the options here. Um, I definitely think Holland and Daring should be at the top of your list if you don't have either of those. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody.